All right, welcome back to the Dividend Dudes. We got Brian, Tom, and me, the dude behind the camera. This is an interesting one. If you've been anywhere and had any awareness of what's been going on in the market, there's the whole story of that CrowdStrike outage. And the big question on our minds, and I'm sure on your mind watching this, has been, was the recent dip a buying opportunity? We want to address that in this video, but first let's show the portfolio, Brian, just so people know where we're coming from with this. So as you see on the screen, our portfolio is up to $46,000 of investments. That gives us roughly $141 a month in monthly dividends. That is after about a little over two years of investing, and that's up about 378% since initial investment. So we do a stock purchase every single month, and normally our stocks pay dividends. CrowdStrike is not a stock that pays a dividend, but they just got brutalized because some engineer decided to click the wrong button. So because of that, we wanted to dig into CrowdStrike and see if they were a potential buy for us on our monthly stock purchase. So who is CrowdStrike? If you haven't heard of them, well, I don't blame you because they're supposed to be running in the background. Basically, they're a cybersecurity software company. Say that, that five times fast. <laughs> Tell me about it. I've gotten through it like 10 times already. That created a software platform called Falcon that does cybersecurity in the background of companies like Microsoft. So how, how bad did this really affect people? Well, if you've got a Windows machine, basically you'll get a blue screen of death, but it, anybody can have this. So you're thinking airports and banks and 911 operators, anybody who used Windows who got this update. Did you see that? Like those photos of the people waiting in the airport and then behind them, there's this monitor showing the, blue like, screen of the, death. the little sad face <laughs> sitting there. <laughs> like that is not a good day. Right. They were not having a good day. But on a good note, if you run Linux or Mac, you're unaffected. So the company came out with a statement to apologize for their oopsie. Deeply apologize. <laughs> they, and they are deeply sorry for inconveniencing everyone in the world. <laughs> basically saying please don't fire us <laughs> right which you know it's they should do that they, they should come out with a statement saying this is what happened this is how we're fixing it sorry they, they did the right thing do we think though that because this happened that all of the sudden that microsoft or any of their vendors are going to just start firing them mm, no no when you've got that level of access it's pretty hard to un like if you're tw intertwined with it it's really hard to undo that so we don't think if there was going to be something that happened, that it would happen tomorrow. Right. It might, but chances are probably not. So what happened to the stock because of this? Well, as expected, it dipped. People pulled out, they were angry at them, and boom. Did it ever dip? There, if you look at the short holdings on this business, there is a 5% total market volume short interest in this business. People are not positive. <laughs> 12 million of their shares are short shares. Yep, so as far as the business is concerned, if we would add it to our portfolio, we like to look at some of the fundamental things. Now, what happened on Friday does make the fundamentals look a little bit better, but for some context, we wanna get into the history of this business. If you go back three years ago and you look at their low, their low on January 10th of 2023 was $95.67. Now, if you go back five years, you can see that their low was $31.95. Now, that is a huge swing from $384 at their high. With that said, if you're looking at the finances thinking, oh, that might not necessarily be a big deal. Now, Seeking Alpha has some positive things to say about this stock. Now, they think, if you go here through the article, now, Seeking Alpha has decided to partner with us. We like to get a lot of inside info, and they've already got almost a dozen articles about CrowdStrike already. <laughs> These people are fast. So if you want to get in on that and get access to some of the stocks that you want to see, uh, click the link below. We've got a discount on their subscription for you, but that's where we found this article. So right now, uh, Seeking Alphas believes that this is a buy on the dip opportunity. And if you go through the article, they talk about why. They still have a lot of software contracts. They're pretty deeply embedded. And for the most part, they're pretty dead on. Now, if you go further down, they talk about the cash flow strength and the overall fundamentals. Now, I wanna to touch on this just a little bit. When we look at the fundamentals, we see a little bit different of a picture. So at first glance, we see that the earnings per share are right around four, which is actually pretty decent, but there's something else you should see. 
price to earnings 667 times earnings <laughs> that is an expensive stock holy crap so going further down the list we check a few other things but this is just gonna be very quick so the earnings per share if we look at the peers and ratio comparison we're just going through the the list straight down on charles schwab um the thing that i like to to look at especially when you're looking at a company in comparison to its peers is the net profit margin now if you compare uh, CrowdStrike to the other five companies in this list here, their profit margin is the lowest. That is not necessarily a good thing. Moving on down the line, we have the balance sheet. Now, when we go through our monthly stock purchase, we have a spreadsheet that we use uh, most months and that spreadsheet compares all these numbers in relation to the other stocks on the list. Now in this one, if you look at their total assets um, from 2020 to 2024, they've gone up from $1.4 billion to $6.6 .6 billion. Now that at first seems really good, but then you go to their liabilities and you say, hey, from $663 uh, million dollars of liabilities to $4.3 billion of liabilities, those are actually increasing at a greater clip. So moving on from that income statement, now this is where this becomes a highly risky play uh, for anybody who's looking at a risk stock, this is for you. Their net income, they were not profitable until this year. So up until now, they weren't doing so good. However, if you look at their cash flow statement and you look at their cash from operations, that all looks pretty good. So they're finally turning a corner financially that lends some credence to what Seeking Alpha has to say. That's not a bad thing. What I don't like to see though is their operating income in the red. <laughs> that is not a good sign. So what you're saying is if you look at the total revenue, it's gone from 481 million in 2020 to 3 billion in 2024. So the revenue is skyrocketing, but in the same time, their expenses have also skyrocketed and hasn't kept pace until this year where it's finally getting a profit now when you're just turning a profit this is not a good time for an oopsie <laughs> right so some of the reasons why we might purchase or might not purchase a stock first of all brian and i came from the tech sector so we know what happens when there's an oopsie we want to wait to see what microsoft does before we would consider them a purchase opportunity. Now, there's a couple of really big red flags. Uh, one, they're low, their stock lows. I mean, even if you go back one year, they're still triple right now after the dip, they're triple the price that they were back in January 10th of last year. That's a pretty big red flag. Now, in order for me to buy a stock that's tripled in value over one year, I wanna see those net operating revenue numbers also do something close to that. Yeah, we like a beat up stock and that's why we're looking at this because it's getting beat up. Bad. <laughs> However, we need more history to show that is going to continue to climb and not just drop from here. Another red flag is that the stock is still up year to date. So even with all of this snafu and the mess that's going on as of last week, it's still doing good relative to its peers. So are we saying that CrowdStrike is a good or bad company? No, not really. I mean, we, we think they're a decent company that is going to start making money, but we are very risk adverse. And this at the moment is too risky for us to, to handle. We want to see a little bit more history, show that they can go up and show that the stock price that it's at right now is not overweighted. Yeah, let's wait to see uh, the short percentage go down from what it is now. That's a huge number. The volume on the stock is just really high as well. Right. The, right now, the stock is for the day traders to attack. And I, you know how I feel about that. I know. <laughs> I know. Sharing the wealth, don't steal people. Right. <laughs> All right, so we've been doing our due diligence on our end on this, but we wanted to know from you, uh, what would you do in this situation? Leave a comment if you have a different opinion, or if, we're just curious to hear what your take on this whole CrowdStrike situation is and if they're a good buy or not. But also, if you want to know whether or not we're going to end up buying them, stay tuned. Uh, you want to subscribe and stay tuned for our videos where we do a monthly stock purchase, and we'll see you in the next video.